What up, girlies? It's Gary Gabagool, host of Cam Girl Diaries. Now, today's episode, we're going to be talking to Minnie St. Clair, except I'm not going to be talking to her. She's going to be talking to you directly. I'm going to try a little something different here because, I don't know, I always feel like I'm taking away from the conversation by asking my stupid questions. I know not all the questions are stupid, but a lot of them are. Come on, like talking about, you know, farting in faces and shit. Like, that's all I want to know about. Where are these weirdos that fart in faces and all that? But... I just edited uh, Minnie St. Clair's footage. She's an expert. She's been in the business since 2003. And I like doing it this way. I just edited the footage and it's phenomenal. She Because she's able to go in depth into all kinds of shit without me interrupting. Which I really think is what you guys want, you know? So, I mean, she goes into... I mean, she of course gives all kinds of great advice. She also talks about... Uh, saving for retirement. She goes deep into the sites that she's on. Uh, she gives you investment advice, relationship advice, how how she converts freeloaders into customers, money management, all kinds of stuff, and how she got into the business and everything. I think I think she, it's I think it's great, you know, because you guys get exactly what you want. Cam girl experience without me interrupting with my dumb shit. So if you're a cam girl and you want to do your own episode, uh, just like uh, Minnie St. Clair did, uh, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, any of the social medias, and, uh, you know, we could set it up. And I'll keep my hands out of it, and I'll get the hell out of here so you guys can listen to Minnie St. Clair, who gives you phenomenal advice. So hope you enjoy as much as I did. I learned a lot, and I'm sure you will too, so enjoy the episode. So my name is Minnie St. Clair. Well, I've been a cam model since March 2003. It's my first job. I dropped out of high school. I answered ad in the paper, and then I became a webcam model. And then from becoming a webcam model, I got real jobs in call center, retail, mostly call center, because call center paid more money at that time. I only took those jobs to make other people happy when I wanted to stay home and work webcam. And then around 2008, I got a job that I actually liked that fired me because a coworker went to my membership website and told everybody. And then I got a next job in a movie theater and the manager, the hiring manager recognized me. So he made my my, my time working there very uncomfortable. So what other question do we have? Oh yeah, and I'm 38 years old. So I've been camming my whole entire life. I, I don't know, I don't know what else to do, honestly. I, I know how to make money online. I know I could go to college if I have the money for it because I don't want to get student loans, things like that. Um, I have a boyfriend, I've been with him for eight years. He's in the industry. So this whole idea of cam models thinking that it's hard to date or hard to find relationships, that is the thing about setting boundaries and knowing your core values of who you are, what you want, what you want your career to be, what you want your life to be. And then um, Ramit Sethi has this thing about marrying the right person because you need the right person who's going to support your career ambitions, whatever they may be, whether it's a cat model or not. So that's that's what I say about that question. How did you get yourself start as a cam girl? Well, I said that I was 18, 2003. I was I was not living at home, so I was not living with my parents. I moved out of the house. I needed a job as quick as possible. My city had these local weekly papers and half the back of those newspapers were all adult entertainment jobs. Massage parlor, strip clubs, escort agencies, and one of them at that time had a small little ad for webcam model. I answered the webcam model ad because I didn't want to be physically talking to some, physically touching somebody to make money at that time of my life. So I took the webcam opportunity and that webcam opportunity also offered me housing accommodations. So I got to live in that house 
and also become a webcam model. It turned into a complete disaster, meaning that the person running the ad in the paper at that time um, got legally charged for forcible confinement and I was there for a year and a half. And then after that, I found I found other people in the industry that had a friend that just let them crash at his place. So it was like this own little drop-in community thing where from meeting him, I got my own apartment. And then from getting my own apartment, I got this apartment. And I've been on my own my entire life, my entire adult life. The minute I turned 18, I started webcamming. And the minute I turned 18, I started webcamming. I lived on my own and filed my taxes as my own individual person. Uh, what do you like the best part about being a cam girl? The freedom. Being a cam model, there's an entire world of freedom that I get to just decide when I'm working, decide who I'm working with, decide if I want to work towards winning a contest to become a, um, a top performer. Decide if I want to go buy a house, if I want to buy a car, if I want to go pay for school. It, it like decide for cosmetic surgery. Everything from webcamming. Choose I get to choose what my life is going to be like on my terms and nobody else. And doing that pisses off a lot of people. Like it's just so many people are upset that I could work from home. <laughs> so many people. I need like the least about being a cam girl. The fact that a lot of cam girls get started and they're waiting for somebody else to tell them what to do. Stop waiting for somebody else to tell you what to do. The job is not that complicated. You're online, you're talking to customers. Some of them have fetishes, some of them don't. You're trying to be fun and flirty and attractive on camera from, and from six hours a day to 12 hours a day, depending on what your goals are. Just stop looking for outside opinions and outside. They're not doing the work. Like my like my family, they don't do the work. My friends, they they don't do the work. They have an opinion about the work, but they never actually turned on the camera and made money from it more than like five minutes. I've been doing it for 20 years. I don't, I'm not looking for someone else's opinion. And then when I do I ask like, like how right now I wanna get cosmetic surgery. And everyone has an opinion of my cosmetic surgery for my body. It's not like, I don't need your opinion. <laughs> so that, the fact that a lot of cam girls are still in this immature, insecure, unsure of themselves, not comfortable in their own skin. You have to trust yourself and trust the process. You're not the first cam girl to do this. Even when I started in 2003, I wasn't the first cam girl. Like I wasn't the first cam girl to log on to a website and make money from the website. I'm not, like I'm, I'm one of the many like beginning cam models. Okay, so what platforms do you use? I work Streamate, Flirt for Free, I'm Live, Cams.com. Cams.com is also called Streamray. I've been on Streamray 2003, my very first website. Then 2004, it was Streamate. 2005, I'm live. 2008, Flirt for Free. I've joined other websites like My Free Cams, Cam Soda, Cam 4, but I've always seemed to make money on premium private based campsites. And that's just where I flourish. Like, cams.com was my first website where I became the top performer on that page. I went back in the internet way back machine, archive machine to find my screenshots of me being a cam model. Um, when I talked to Liz over at Streamate, she's all excited about my account, being one of the first accounts. And for, for free, I just have to rank up. I just have to hustle, make my money, make my hours, build my customers, build my regulars, and just rent, like, the way that Flirt for Free is set up in a way that um, you, you have level, you have credit levels. So each credit level gives you a certain badge on your profile on Flirt for Free. Once you earn that badge on your Flirt for Free pro profile, you don't, you don't get demoted. You're always promoted. And I really like that their system that sets it up. Like right now, Flirt for Free is doing their Flirt Summit conference 
where they rent out a resort, they rent out a travel location for all of their cam models, and they recognize all of their cam models. Like, for a company that recognizes their models internally as a company, Flirt for Free does it. For a lot of the other companies, it's externally, like at events, like Bucharest Summit, XBiz Summit, Why Not Cam Community. Those industry events is where I would like to be able to travel and meet other, like, not necessarily meet other models. I don't, honestly don't like meeting other models because I find them immature and irritating. Like, just a handful of models I'm cool with, I like them because there's a maturity, like, there's a maturity you have to get to when you're in this industry that you just want to make your money and be as successful as possible. And new models, they haven't developed that skin yet. They haven't developed that, that vibe yet. They haven't developed that drive yet. And for me, I want to be around companies and people that are driving force of, we're going to ride this rave until the wheels fall off. Like, for the way money on the internet works for just the internet in general, this is this is it. Like, first thing people do when you turn 18, you just get a credit card for mostly men. They go on porn websites, they go on webcam sites. Like the amount of customers that I have in my room for being online for 20 years and having them in my chat room it's fresh out of college with a credit card and they're in my room spending money spending money okay yes it's a little weird like it's a little like if I think about it like realistically think it's odd it's very odd I'm 38 and some 20 year old is in my webcam room with this credit card ready to spend it on me but if I do it properly he can be a customer for the rest of my life like, so <laughs> that is what we're in that is what we're doing. We're building long-term, long-lasting relationships with customers who want to see you every time you're online, who want to buy you things every time you're online. It's just because, like, I have a dude who on my chat room for 15, 10 years says he's my fan, who spends 15 minutes of paid chat time with me, and he thinks he's gonna marry me. Okay, sure. Why not? Like, I throw my wig on, I throw my makeup on, I throw my laundry on, I go make my money and I log off. Mommy and daddy don't like what I do. Okay, great. They're not paying my bills. They're not buying groceries. They're not rep repairing my credit over at Equipass and Tran TransUnion. That is me. That is me, my efforts, my talent, my skills, my transferable skills doing those things. That is that that's coming from me. Where did I lose the question? Um, platform. Oh, <laughs> it was a platform question. Which platform are your favorites to use and why? Like I said, I really like Flirt for Free. Flirt for Free has a really nice way of building their brand. But I work for campsites that all have a style of premium based chats where there's free chat, then I entice the customers to go to private chat. And then now we have the Love Ends toys connected to the websites and other Bluetooth tipped activated toys connected to the website. Some of them I can upload videos for video on demand or subscription sites like Streamate has this new thing they're trying to roll out where it's a subscription site on the live cam and then there's like pay-per-view content at, like right now all these campsites try to be one-stop shop for customers where all your content is on one platform and for the four websites that I work they each have a feature that I really really like like I'm live has um, really great prizes at the end of the pay period like one year they gave away what did I want from them that are given away some cameras like a couple years they're giving away cameras they're giving away the Sony ZV-1 camera they're giving away the Canon 200D camera, then they gave away Louis Vuitton shopping bags, and they gave away um, iPhones. Almost every year they give away an iPhone, one of the prizes for I'm Live, and that's it. Like, there's not a lot of things you need to do on a webcam site except be there, be available, build a strong relationship with the customers where they feel like you're listening to them. Key thing about customers on websites, they want to like know that you're listening to them and know that you're paying attention to them. Like that that's just the re that's the reason why they stay they stick around. 
because honestly the whole sexual aspect of webcamming is only really six minutes it truly is it's six minutes and then both of you are finished and then what okay six minutes at five dollars a minute not a whole lot of time that's that, that's not a lot of money <laughs> just <laughs> when you really do the math it's not it's six seven minutes okay I try to get my customers to stay in room for 15 minutes or longer to do that is something else we're talking about is something else we're doing there's another connection that's happening and with private premium based sites I have the opportunity of doing that when they go in private chat I'm not like I don't need a minute person three minutes or less I'm not talking to nobody who's three minutes or less it's longer okay so how did you increase your income over time pretty much the exact same thing I just said plus also exploring other parts of the online business industry the internet is a little bigger than webcam there's other parts of the internet that make money like being an affiliate being an affiliate we sell other companies products for a commission as an independent sales representative the exact same sites that have models wanted right under it says affiliates sign up or webmasters sign up even like the um, subscription sites I can like I don't have to have a subscription website I can totally tell cam models or other models or other content creators to join this site and get paid a commission to make money which you may have noticed of some of the model management agencies that are popping up on the internet they're making money by telling you to join the website Great, so when you like, even Flirt for Free, they have, Flirt for Free has a Refer a Friend program where if a model signs up on the Refer a Friend program link, I get a percentage of their sales. There's a, like, if they make money, I make a per percentage of money from their link. Then there's um, this whole arena of high ticket affiliate marketing where they sell digital courses and coaching. Yeah, I make money from there too. Has nothing to do with being naked on the internet. It has nothing to do with being being a cat model. It has nothing to do with being sex vixen, you want to call it. Like it I'm using the other part of my skills, the other part of my brain, the other part of talking business, the other part of being an entrepreneur, the other part of being a content creator, the other part of using social media. Using social media for the purpose of people want to consume content and buy products. They want to buy products and services on the internet. It's we're not like as much as we want to watch those TikTok dancing videos people are buying items they're buying products you recommend and the same way that I have a customer that has been following me for 10 years is the same way that other people on the internet that read my blogs or um, follow my YouTube channel that watch all my videos and they think they know everything about me but they bought every product I recommend sure I have some people who want to book coaching okay we can do coaching I'm really big in personal finance and I'm really big in um, following the Dave Ramsey plan and the Money Guy Financial Order of Operations plan. Me recommending that and using it as my lifestyle, as how I manage my finances as an entrepreneur, as an online business content creator, as an influencer, those things like that. There are people who want me to coach them on their personal finances just as much as they want me to coach on their businesses. So things like that I've added to increase my income as, as over time. Over time I've developed more skills, I develop more interests, I develop more passions and there's more places on the internet that make money just as much as they do as being a cam model so I'm not trying to limit myself to being only a cam model and I'm not trying to limit myself to only be a social media influencer at the same time or a content creator or whatever name they want to use for making money online yeah those things like that what equipment do you use for camming I still use I still upgrade my computer but for webcam I still use the Logitech C920 webcam. Um, my room is pretty small, so I'm not sure if using the Logitech conference webcams will work out well for me. But I still keep it simple. Like, I mean, I could upgrade to the Sony ZV-E10 because it has the remote control with power zoom. 
but it's just more things, more cables to worry about and things breaking down over time. So if I really need the remote control camera, it would be probably the Logitech conference cameras because Logitech, all they do is build cameras. They build webcams. So I'm looking at Logitech more than other cameras because of um, the company behind it and why the company is building those cameras. Like originally I started with the Sony Handycam camera because it had the remote control zoom, but it didn't have the pan and tilt. While Logitech, they had pan and tilt remote control zoom cameras that basically move around the whole entire room as I move around the room while I'm doing webcam. So, and then my computer, the computer, I use desktops. I'm not a laptop person. Um, I like my desktop. I like that it, ha it holds more power. It holds more computer power in a desktop than it does a laptop. Even though, yes, they're making laptops a lo lot more powerful, but you have to make sure the laptop is cool. If the laptop is overheated, then you don't have a machine. So I rather have, right now I have three desktops that I have to upgrade because they're from 2017. Things like that. I buy, I buy devices that last a long time as much as possible. So I spend, I spend a good amount of money in my equipment because that is building the franchise of being a cat model is to make sure your business is operational. So things, and then wigs. The whole lace front wigs, the whole um, full cap wigs, that I'm getting into buying wigs on webcam because I'm not, I'm not spending money on the hair salon. I right now I spend forty dollars at the barber shop. If I go on Mondays, it's thirty dollars. I tip my barber five to ten dollars depending on how I feel. He cuts my hair. I put on a wig. I do my makeup. I'm online, and then lingerie like that and then cosmetic surgery. So if we're going for things to buy as a cam model, one of the things on my list, my personal list, is cosmetic surgery, just because over time, your body changes. Every, like what you thought in your 20s is not going to happen in your 30s and 40s. It's, it's not, you need to think long term. Same thing with the little boyfriend that you have when you're 20. He's probably not going to be your little boyfriend when you're 30 and you're 40. <laughs> I mean, it like in the nicest way, but the way that I'm reading on Reddit right now, a bunch of girls complaining about their relationships and stuff. And I'm like, do you really want to be with this person long term? Because I know for me, long term, I plan my career. It's webcam, it's entrepreneurship, it is, yes, I'll go to college for a diploma. No, I, I may not necessarily work in my diploma field. Like, what I learn in college is probably not going to be my career. But it is going to be webcamming. And it is going to be the industry of webcamming. It's not just what I do on the computer. It's also going to the events to meet the people who make these companies. Like, this is a big industry that's 30 years old. I'm not going to just stay in my house and log on to a computer. I want to meet the people that are signing my paychecks. Okay, next question. What advice would you give a new cam girl? I've been giving new advice the whole entire time I've been doing this video. And again, it goes back to the same thing. Stop worrying about what other people think. They, they really don't matter. My mom says it to me. It's, it's, my mom's Christian, so she believes in the Christian faith. So it's your, your holy power, your spiritual faith, then you, not the family. It's you. It's you and the relationship you have with the higher power, whatever that is. Okay, great. I know for me, I want to uh, make sure I have money in retirement. So a lot of the money I make from retirement, about 25% to 50% of that goes into retirement income because as a cam model, you are self-employed. There is nobody putting money in your retirement as you get older. Like, there's nobody doing Even if, so like how the world doesn't really like cam models because we're in the sexual industry, we still have to put money in our retirement. Regardless of what the, the, the society says morally about our job. Because they're not going to be there when we're homeless or we're struggling with a disability or um, our spouse 
our male spouse has passed away and we have to fund our retirement. They're not going to be there. Like they're, they're not going to be there. It's us. So every dollar you make, a portion of that has to go into saving for your future. Either it's um, investing in real estate, if you have the ability to do that, or it's investing into mutual funds and the stock market. Don't go into crypto. Like I don't, to go into things that have been running and operating since the 1800s, which is the stock market and the industrial revolution that capitalism is built off of. Like go with the things that work. Invest in Amazon, invest in Tesla, invest in Twitter if there's a stock for Twitter. Like Elon Musk may be doing some crazy stuff, but he has other companies that are on the stock market that you can invest in. Amazon, Amazon is really not going anywhere. Um, Whole Foods, not really going anywhere. Um, every car company out there, not really going anywhere. Every electric company, not going anywhere. Invest in the economy that we spend our money in because it's been around since the beginning of time. Crypto? No, not really. I don't really trust crypto over there. I'm investing in the industrial capitalism industry that's always been there since I was born until now. And then maybe real estate. I'm really thinking about buying my house and then maybe buying another house and then that's it. I don't really need to have a whole bunch of real estate property. I can just have one or two and I'm good to go. Because one good solid property that's that's giving me like income from having tenants, I'm okay with that. Then it's not a lot of things I need to worry about. There's also that, keeping things very, very simple in your life. Great, the boyfriend doesn't like you. Okay, let's break up and find somebody who does. I've been with my person now for eight years. Nine, I think. Here's the beauty of being in a relationship with somebody who's in the industry. You don't have any jealousy or insecurities about, oh, you're naked on the internet. His penis is on the internet, my vagina is on the internet, and we both make money and take care of each other. That's it. The more you know who you are as a person, the more who you know what you want out of a relationship. Whether it's casual, whether it's a committed relationship with marriage and babies and stuff. You just have to really know who you are. And the sooner you know who you are, the sooner you can tell a lot of people to go suck it. <laughs> okay, that answers that question. What we say are your do's and don'ts of camming. Um, like follow the performer agreement for the websites you work. Every campsite you're with has a code of conduct, has a performer contract, has a legal document that you signed that you said you agreed to to keep your job as a cam model on that platform. Follow the rules. Also, the thing with the don'ts, nobody needs to know you're on your period. Like flat out, nobody does. We have, if you have a female body and you identify with your female body, your cycle is going to show up. Whether it shows up on time or it shows up irregular or whatever it does, you know it's going to happen. Plan for it. Um, do's and don'ts. What do you do while you're live on cam? How do you stay occupied when it's slow? Here's the thing. When it's slow, there's always somebody watching you on camera. There's, there's always, like, they may not be logged in. Some websites have it where they can hover over your room and they show a little clip of your room live. When you're live on camera, just think somebody is watching you. So sometimes, yes, I, I have music in the background. I sometimes have a show that I'm watching with subtitles, but I, I, I know there's somebody watching me. I even sometimes try to I say that if you're watching me, you're not logged in, I invite you to log in and have a conversation with me while I'm online. Like when you're online, just think there's somebody watching you all the time. It's just easier. Like, and then if it's slow for like, for me, if it's slow for 30 minutes, I may log off and come back depending on the website. Like depending on which website I'm working, I may have to log off take a break, take a stretch, walk around, and then come back. But when I'm online and it's slow, I just think there's somebody in the room all the time, and I try to make sure that my room is directing people to either join and sign up, or to log in and have a conversation with me. And also, I sometimes talk to the, the freeloaders in my room. 
That's what they're there for. They build conversation in your room. Like if you're not able to converse with the freeloaders in your room, how are you supposed to convert customers to join the, join the website to spend money on you? And some of the websites, part of your power score, your cam score, is how well can you convert customers from free customer, a freeloader customer, a gray customer, to a spending member customer. And to do that, you learn how to do that when it's slow online. You do. Like, if it's slow online for more than 30 minutes, I will log off and then come back. Or I switch sites. This is also why it's good to have multiple different sites and multiple different um, platforms, things like that. But it even doesn't really matter what website you're broadcasting live on. Eventually, every website goes slow, sometimes at the exact same time, like even that too. Some websites go slow at the same time. Yeah, when I'm live online, I talk to my customers. I make sure everyone knows I'm live, like I'm really here. I remember one time I used to, um, I used to pick my nose so they knew I was really here. Um, or I would eat um, craft dinner, the mac and cheese out of a box. So they knew I was really there. Like I was really a person right there in front of them. Like things like that. Like it's now more people have an idea that you actually are there, but, um, it's just making sure that the room knows you're here, you're here to have a conversation, you're here to have fun. Did you look at my pictures? Did you look at my videos? Did you join and get the free credits for signing up as a brand new member? You're constantly promoting and directing them to something on the website that gets them to do an action. Whether it's to type or to take you private or to tip your toy or to join your fan club. Some websites let you um, promote your social media depending on what the rules are. The rules are very important and then you have to be the tour guide director of the website while you're online. Um, how does your boyfriend feel about your camming? He does it himself. <laughs> like, my, he, like he does it himself. Past boyfriends, it was the first thing they knew about me. Like I'm not going to waste my time on a penis if they have issues with what I do. The joke is like, so if I'm with my past relationships that I was in, if I was with a person who did not like my job but claimed they would give me money so I would stop my job, they would eventually stop giving the money because they think it's too much money that they're giving me. So like I used to have like a boyfriend that would think, oh, I'll just give you money so you don't have to work. Okay. It was great for like three months. And then after it was like, you know, this is really getting expensive for me. I, I really can't do that no more. When I could be working the entire time, which I did. So sometimes dudes would be giving me money because they think they're going to stop me from my work. I would keep working. They're not going to stop me from getting a check in my name. No, they're just, they're just not. Like your, your, your penis is not, not magical. It's, it's not. So yeah. The dude I have now, he knows, he does what I do, he's in the industry, he has his own business, he takes care of his family, um, yes he has his own, you know, mental health issues, I have mine, we're both grown adults, we like each other, we want to be together, we, we work out problems, we work out conflict, we, we plan our future together. Like we do things in the intention that I'm going to invest my time with you. I will like these things to happen while I'm still the same person I've always been. Like, I'm not gonna quit my job for a penis. Um, what was your work experience as a cam girl? Um, just some companies. Some companies in the industry are um, racist, straight up. They're just racist. Like, I, the amount of times I got told by companies in the industry that I wouldn't make money because of the color of my skin. I've been here for 20 years. Clearly somewhere on the planet and some website, somebody is giving me money over and over for 20 years. So that, like, that's the worst part. And then, um, yeah, so like, even that, with me making money as a cam model, I sometimes... Depending on the season, depending on the year, I am making more money than my friends. I am making more money than my boyfriend. Sometimes I'm a generous person, so sometimes I would buy my friends gifts. Sometimes it makes them super uncomfortable. Um, 
I, again, not my problem. <laughs> I work really, really hard for what I have. And sometimes I like to share and be generous as a generous person and give to people that are important to me. And if they become uncomfortable because I'm making more money than them and I want to buy them whatever item I want to buy them as a gift, that is just a type, like that is part of the result of my efforts. Like that. What's your worst experience as cam girls? Yeah, I don't have time for girls talking bad about, like grow up, this is not high school. I left high school, what, 20 years ago? I'm not trying to go back there. Like I dropped out of high school because I didn't want to be around people in high school. So when girls in the industry talk like they're like still in high school, I cannot be around that. I can't. I, re I refuse to participate in that nonsense. We're just not doing that. We're grown adults in a grown business. We are business, we're business owners. Operate your business like a business professional. Okay, what is the next question? Do you perform while you're on your period? If so, do you do anything normal? Well, as I said at the beginning, don't tell people you're on your period. Nobody needs to know you're on your period. So for me, when that shows up, it shows up on a schedule. The reason it shows up on a schedule is that I talk to my healthcare provider, my OBGYN, and we discuss my options of scheduling my monthly cycle. And the reason we schedule it so I can schedule my work around it. I never talk about when I'm on it. I mean, like, I've talked about it, like, because it's different from when I was younger to when now that I'm older. Because this, the, my body has changed. I'm getting a grown woman's body. The body I have now is not the body I had when I was 20, and the body I had when I was in my 30 is not the body I'm having as I enter my 40s. It's completely different. So, and I've been doing this business full time for 20 years. I just don't talk about it. Like, I'm, like I just don't, I don't work. I do other things. I have other skills. I have other ways of making money. I build up my savings. Like I literally have a savings account to take time off. If I'm taking time off, I have my say I prepay my bills. So if the cell phone, internet, tenant insurance, rent needs to be paid up because I get my cycle near when bills are due, those good the bills are due, they say the first of the month, and I get my thing at the first of the month. You pay your bills in advance. Cert like you like honest if you plan your money plan your work, talk to your healthcare providers because there's way more options around managing your menstrual cycle than ever before. Science is wonderful. So that is how I handle that. What's the most unique prop or costume that you used or worn on camera? For me, it's the Lovin's toy. The Lovin's the love toy, like in the beginning, I, I didn't have a good impression of the Lovin's toy. The Lovitz toy just seemed, it just like the type of girls I was watching with the Lovitz toy did just seemed outrageously ridiculous. And then I finally got mine because Lovitz sent it to me as, as um, working with them as a collaboration deal. And then I finally got to use it. Like it's not what I thought it would be, like I exaggerated in my head. So for me, it's a love inch toy. I'm not really like big on anything else other than that. It's a love inch toy. And then also, I don't use every love inch toy that's out there. Because I know who I am. I know my body. I know what I'm comfortable with. I learned that I don't need to follow everybody. Like, I'm not a sheep. I'm a wolf. There's just certain toys I'm not going to get. I, I like, And it's not, it's not what I want to do when I'm online. Like cer certain toys that I see other models with, it's a toy I don't want to have. Like honestly, the physical demanding that our job is, like physically demanding on our body. Like, we are doing the things to our body on camera for multiple hours of the day, multiple days out of the week. You will get tired. And then I live with a disability. I live with um, a chronic health condition that affects my muscles, my concentration, 
my ability to um it, it affects my sexual function things like that i don't have time to be jumping on my head like a circus act we're not no we're we're not doing that so there's also that <laughs> Uh, does your family know you're a cam girl? They do. They wish I'm doing something else. My sister does not talk to me. Um, now that I'm like 38, it's less of, oh, you should be doing something else. It's, I'm an adult. I can make my own decisions. Even from the day I started. So the day I started and how my mom found out because somebody told my sister my sister told my mom my mom ambushed me in the car i was working for like a year i wasn't living at home that's the other thing when cam models start working and you're living at home you need to grow up you need to cut off that part of the relationship and step out on your own like you, 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 like the sooner you're making your own money and paying your own bills and buying your own toilet paper and getting your own rent in your like your own lease in your own name for your own place to live, they don't like what like what are they gonna say to you? You live on your own. You're paying your bills on your own. You're paying your taxes on your own. You're contributing to your own retirement on your own. So they know. Do I care that they know? No. Do I wish, do they, like, I wish they would recognize my work as an accomplishment for me of, like, um, being featured in the articles for Love Ends or being interviewed in a podcast or um, I'm filmed in a documentary that's aired on television and video on demand. They don't think it's a big deal. Like, they don't even see it as an accomplishment. Like, things like me traveling to conferences to meet other people and talk business with other companies and collaborate with other people and work with people I really would like. Like me meeting people in the industry that I admired was a big thing for me and my parents, they're negative about it. So why I'm gonna have them, like no. It's the same thing with the boyfriend. I'm not gonna have a boyfriend who's going to sabotage my career because of their insecurities, their hangups about it. Same thing with my family. If they really do not like what I do, they don't have to talk to me. They did their job. They gave me life. We magically made it to legal age of 18. I'm on my own. I left the nest. I take care of myself. So that I'm not really worried about my family at all. There's going to be a lot of people who do not understand what you're doing. You really don't need to bring them along for the ride. There are plenty of other models that are in the industry that you can connect with that are don't talk to their family, that don't like Mother's Day, that don't like Father's Day, that don't have children, that are doing things on their own terms because we are adults. Some of us are opening companies, some of us are opening agencies, some of us have properties in real estate, some of us have franchises and other businesses, some of us are just, you know, they, we live in a cabin in the woods. And we're happy living in the cabin in the woods or we travel to tropical locations every year or you know we have sugar sugar babies yeah we have sugar babies I remember that season I'm my sugar baby I just gave them like a thousand dollars a month it was it was simple I don't have to worry about anything <laughs> it was so simple when I had the sugar baby he was a young 21 year old dude that I like and we were fun we had a good time and then I found somebody else and he got upset. <laughs> like that, like embrace the fact that this is the entryway to design your entire life. Yeah, it's a, like, it's a lifestyle. It's, it's, I'm gonna be like, and then because I know it's a lifestyle and I met cam models that are over the age of 65 that are doing this business because that niche of um, over the ages, there's a thing, there's mature and older, then there's like gilf, whatever category, that category of models, I may, depending on how well I look and what's going on and what websites are available at that time, I may still be doing it. There's nothing really to stop me from doing this until I reach the age of 75, like at all, except maybe, you know, menopause and those things, but Science can take care of that, so we're fine with that. 
how does caffeine affect your sex life? Again, it doesn't. And the reason it doesn't, I'm not doing certain things on camera. So there's certain certain things my, my relationship wants in our sexual activities I do with him that I do not do on camera. So there's also that. I keep certain things separate. I keep things personal, we're personal. I keep things where business is business. And I do not let both of them, I don't cross the boundary on any of them. If I say I'm no, I'm not doing that on camera, and I say no, I'm not doing that in person, that's it. And I don't need to pressure myself to do something hoping that it will make more money because with webcam, there is a customer who will spend money on me. So I don't have to feel the pressure that I have to do this because I have to make the money. And it's the thing, if you're managing your money properly, you have the money to take care of your finances so you're not pressured into doing things you don't want to do. What's the craziest thing you, I think a customer asks you to do? They don't, because I don't do them. Like it's that simple. Customers don't ask me to do crazy things because I don't even entertain the topic. I literally ignore the conversation. Like if they ask me something that I'm uncomfortable with, I ignore it or I talk to another customer in the room that is doing something that I'm interested in, which trains the other customer to change his conversation or to find somebody else who will do the crazy thing that he's looking for. How do you do your work-life balance? What do you do when you're not creating content? Anything else? The amount of other stuff that I have to do? Like, I have a chronic illness that requires me to do blood work at the lab. I go in for an appointment, they take blood from my arm, then they send it off to a doctor, then the doctor has to read the notes, then the doctor goes over the notes with me and we do follow-up, then there's therapy, then there's rehab, the gym membership, me saving up for gym equipment, so diet, exercise, follow-ups my doctor, planning travel because I want to go to Disney. I really want to go to Disney. I really want to go to Disney. <laughs> so there's a plan of me going to Disney for my 40th birthday. That, that I, I really, really would like to go to Disney. <laughs> that I'm planning on like, this is a lifestyle and it's, you need a life outside of being on camera. You need a life outside of building content. You need a life that has nothing to do with telling somebody you have a small penis. When I'm offline, I'm off. I cook, there's groceries, there's laundry, there's planning travel, there's my doctor's appointments. I have to do the disability benefits. I have so many other things to worry about. Like even now, I added on my schedule to attend networking events. There are networking events in my city for entrepreneurship. I need to go out there and mingle and meet other people who are in other industries of employment, self-employment, small business, entrepreneurship. That I'm an entrepreneur first. I'm an independent contractor, small business, filing, tax form, T2125, small business, professional activities. I need to do those things in that job type, that title alone. Like that. And then school. I plan to go to school. I plan to go to college. I may take more than one diploma program or degree program or certificate program or um, private college abroad. At one point I wanted to be a veterinarian. To be a veterinarian is a lot of like a lot of school and expensive. And I was looking at um, a veterinarian school in the Caribbean. Like I was ready to plan my life in the Caribbean to go to co college for a career as a veterinarian. And then tattoos. I still gotta plan out my sleeve. That takes time and effort. That has nothing to do with being on camera. Like things like that. There's so many other things you can be doing outside of being on camera. And then I learned in my life, I'm not having children, but I may, I may volunteer to church. Church always thinks they want to save me. So, okay, sure. <laughs> Let, that's like sometimes, like now I'm at the level that I'm very comfortable in my work. If some Christian evangelist person thinks they can save me because they're called to do it by the Holy Spirit, I let them do it. You really think you can? Okay, go ahead. <laughs> they try, they try really hard to try and get us out of this work. Um, what keeps you motivated as a cam girl? Anything else you'd like to add that's not listed? 
Well, I pretty much said everything I can think of, honestly. And then what motivates me is the fact that this industry is the most exciting industry there is. To turn on your computer, to turn on a webcam, to click broadcast and make money and never leave the house. Okay, sure. I want to make as much money as possible. There's no other job that's going to pay this kind of money. Like we could compare it to YouTube and Twitch, but they're still not going to pay this kind of level of money. But I'm pretty sure cam models, con like adult content creators make more money than live streaming video games or a YouTube um, content creator channel. I like we make the most money, period. So it's like me making me having the motivation to make $100 a day every single day. It's a very difficult goal. It truly like, because something comes up. Like something in life always comes up. For me, it was my disability. It's living with multiple sclerosis and bipolar disorder, post-traumatic stress disorder. And then now um, things have settled down. I'm sober for two years. I really want to buy my house. Buying my house, I need to maintain an income of $60,000 a year and a credit score of 650. I got the credit score. Credit score is like 660 or something like that, but I need to maintain the income for two years straight. So when I apply for the mortgage, they can see that my income has maintained $60,000 a year, which is $40,000 US for $60,000 Canadian for two years straight so that when I go to the mortgage broker and they look at my income, tax return, the notice of assessment and my assets, that there's enough money in there that I can go buy a house. Like things like that. If we're being a cam model, there's a cam model studio called Angel Studios that I follow on Twitter. They have cam models making $68,000 a month. I would like a piece of that. I, I, I really like, can I have half? <laughs> like, can I have half? Yeah, I fully did that on the calculator. $68,000 a month for 30 days. 68 divided by 30 was $2,266.66 per day. Okay. So 2,266 divided by 12 hours. That's 188 an hour for 12 hour day. Like I follow Angel Studios Twitter, they post street screenshots of what their models earn in their studio. They had a model earn $68,000 for the month, which is $2,266 per day or $188 for a 12 hour day per hour. Yeah. So what motivates me is that the money, the money is right there. My, my base foundation of being a cam model is $100 a day for 365 days a year and most of the time I don't make it because other things in life pop up or I get tired or I get bored the thing is the customers ask online when I'm online are the exact same thing as they've been asking me in 2003 they're not asking anything different. They're the same things they're asking now is what they've been asking then. So all those things that I go through and process and whatever. And then my mom, my mom, my family not talking to me. She's still not going to like my work. Okay, great. I'm going to keep working because that's my job. I don't stop my family from doing their job that I don't like. They still go to work because why? I grew up being told I have to work. Okay, they both hate their jobs. I happen to really like my job and really want to be at my job. And they like, oh, we don't like your work because you're naked. That's the only thing about my job that bothers you? Because there's other things about my job. Like how the business works, how the business is structured, how it's structured differently around the world. The way that webcamming is operated in the United States and Canada and the UK is completely different how it operates in Colombia, Romania, Latin America. Um, yeah, those, those three, those countries over there, they operate our business differently. Like you need to pay attention to the Romanian studios and how they promote their studios and how they promote the, 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 the camming profession. It's nothing like what we do in America. I'm in Canada. 
again, totally different operation, totally different like motivation and skill sets and philosophy around the business of being a cam model that aren't like the immature cam models need to pay attention. Like you're in a big business and you're worried about this boyfriend doesn't like me. Find somebody else. You know, if you're making a lot of money as a cam model, you can go hire a matchmaker to find you a proper boyfriend. Yeah. That, like, I don't worry about little boyfriend when I was 18 anymore. Little boyfriend when I was 18, he has two kids, wants to get a divorce from his baby mother from 2003 when he brushed me off that I wasn't a good person to be with. Okay, go be with that person. Now he's like, oh, I don't like that person. You know, I've been thinking about you. Great. I have not been thinking about you at all. <laughs> I've been with a dude for eight years. Just little boyfriend from 2003 when I was 18. No, don't think about like that. There's so many things bigger than what we're doing we need to focus on. So yeah, that's what I got for you. Um, good luck trying to edit this video and I'll see you on the next one. Bye. So that was a phenomenal episode, wasn't it? I mean, unbelievable. Like she got into everything. So if you guys want to do your own episode of Cam Girl Diaries, just like uh, Minnie did, hit me up on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, anywhere, YouTube. Uh, I don't know. The links are all in the description, aren't they? You can find it, I'm sure. Hit me up and uh, we'll set it up. And uh, yeah, make sure you go check out her, uh, Minnie St. Clair's YouTube channel and support her and everything. And, you know, I'm sure if you're a cam girl and you got questions, she'll fucking help you out, you know, because that's how you girls seem to be all helping each other out and everything. So hope you enjoyed the episode. I hope you enjoyed how we did it this time. I'm sure you did because I was only in it for what, a couple minutes. So that's even this is too long. I'll just shut up now. So. Hope you enjoyed the episode and tune in next time for an all new Cam Girl Diaries podcast. Make that money, girlies.